With the Ring of Fire Tour done and dusted, the next stop for the Arlite Elite Lead Series presented by Smash Beer would be the Oxford Plains Speedway up in Maine for the Polymer Oil 200. Libby Bell grabs the pole, her fourth of the season, and she makes great use of that, getting away at the start. It would be a very hairy start, though, as J.W. Lester pushes up into BXB foot. Alex Carson, the outside pole sitter, goes into the wall and loses a lot of ground. Taylor Brillen has a problem. I believe that she's got a tire going down. She pulls that 64 car to the inside, but coming into turn one, she loses control of the car and slides right in front of Barton Sandy, car number 92. That sums up the last couple of months for Taylor Brillen as her season has really started to fall apart. Libby Bell is trying to fight with the uh, lapped car of Kelly Splicen. Splicen fighting very hard to get her lap back as J.W. Lester now takes advantage of the uh, 24 being displaced from her line. Lester sliding up into the 44. Contact between all three of those cars right there. Nobody is really showing much respect for each other in these opening laps as Seiji Daiho, car 39, gets into the back of the 5-0. Libby Bell got a little piece of that as Lester slides off in turn number one. Lester was off to a very good start, but uh, after seeing some of his driving in the opening laps, it's kind of hard to sympathize as Libby Bell continues to lead on the restart. Seiji Daiho in second. Uh, Daiho not able to make any real run at the moment. J.W. Lester is back on the charge, but he pushes up into Kelly Posadas, forcing Edwin Schwarzlowski off the road in turn two. Schwarzlowski goes hard into the wall. And Lester's shenanigans tonight are not done as he uh, breaks down and comes to a stop on the outside of turn four after the restart. Coming back to the caution, uh, Taylor Brillen hops the curb in turn one and slides up into Casey Campbell and Kyle Gaffigan. Campbell came across the line in sixth place. Uh, she has carried that 422 all the way to second in points. Coming into this race as we see AJ Young pile into the back of Alex Carson. Well, uh, there was indeed quite the stack up in turn two. AJ Young really ought to be paying more attention, and this earned him a trip to race control. Kyle Gaffigan is out with an engine failure after running in fifth place. Taylor Brillen on the restart is going to be turned around by Scott Dodds. She slides back up into her teammate, Leslie Riggs. Riggs is going to go out of the race while Brillen will march on despite being off the lead lap as you see Trey Ashby off the road there. Jack Dempsey is having a very solid run so far, running up in third place, but he gets caught in between uh, Bixby Foot and Radomir Stanichev and is uh, put into the wall as Foot and Stanichev go off the road as well. After the restart, Casey Campbell gets into the back of Kelly Posadas. Coming out of turn two, they both go off the road and slide right into the turn four wall. Campbell hit that wall especially hard. Car 422 is done, and that's going to be a huge blow for them in the points. Ramsey Cockiner is up to third place at the uh, halfway point in this 100 lap race. Very good run for Cockiner tonight. We normally don't see him up front. Kelly Posadas is running a lap down at this point, and she's going to get tagged by Bixby Foot. Posadas, Foot, and Richard Scott all go off the road. However, this isn't going to bring out the yellow flag. You're not missing anything up front. Lippy Bell is still the leader. She has led all but one lap so far. Bell is looking for her third win of the year. She won at Mosport and Buffalo Downs earlier this season. Makoto Yamada is doing a good job running up in 10th place, but that car seems to have lost power, and he's struggling to get up to speed. I am expecting him to be lapped. Uh, within the next few minutes. Remember how Kelly Splicen was running a lap down earlier in the race? Well, she's gotten her lap back and she's been tearing through the field. She is currently up to fourth and looking to chase down Ramsey Cockiner, who still holds third. Jack Dempsey, car 41 for Terror International Motorsports, runs fifth, a very good run by his standards. And Alex Carson, despite all of the accidents he's gotten into tonight, is currently sixth, although he is struggling to hold off Zach Webster in that 23 car. Webster's had a lot of good runs this year, especially that second place finish to uh, Zachary Zins at Texas earlier in the season. Makoto Yamada's car finally bites the dust, and he's going to park it on the inside of turn one. That's going to bring out another caution. After the restart, we have three wide between Steeny Chef, Splicen, and Brillen. Brillen uh, washes up into Splicen takes uh, all three of those cars off the road. Even with all of the uh, problems that have been out of her control, Brillen's driving is especially sloppy tonight. 
Libby Bell is trying to put Richard Scott back a lap down. Seiji Daiho is still in second place. However, Ramsey Cockiner in third is trying to close in. Battle for fourth between Kelly Splicen and Jack Dempsey. Splicen continuing on after that incident as if nothing happened. And we've got a caution with just a few laps remaining as Bixby Foot has a problem and parks that 14 car to the inside of turn one. I'm not sure why Foot didn't just bring it to the pit lane because Libby Bell is going to have just one lap to try to hold off the rest of the field. I'm sure that will be an interesting post-race spanning over at Power Steering Incorporated, but Bell gets off to a great start. Daiho trying to hold off the 31 of Cockiner. Uh, none of these guys are able to make any serious charges as Libby Bell comes across the line to take her third win of the season. Bell absolutely annihilated the field, leading all but one lap from the pole. Seiji Daiho finishes second in the 39 for Kurt Walker Motorsports. He is splitting that car with Nami Mura for the championship. Ramsey Cockiner third, I believe that's his best career finish. Jack Dempsey was able to hold off Kelly Splicen. Michael Madrigal and Allie Riggs quietly finish in the top 10. Taylor Brillen and Kelly Posadas round out the top 10. They were both two laps down. And for the second round here at Oxford Plains tonight, Herbie Finkelberg is on the pole, although he gets off to a rather slow start. Tyler just barely beat him to the line, but uh, Finkelberg charges back. And coming into three, look at Bobby Porto on the inside, making a dive on Lucas Sweeney and Dan Leglider. Three wide to take the third position, and now he looks to take second as there's contact between Finkelberg and Rip Tyler. I think that 66 car may be uh, not handling very well. And we've got a caution at the end of the first lap. Benji Flynn, car 36, washes up into Jessica Graham, goes hard into the wall and upside down. Eric Jackson, car 7, gets a, a very big chunk of that, but Jackson's going to keep going. Flynn, however, is quite obviously done for the night as Finkelberg blows up under caution. Finkelberg's night is very short-lived, though with uh, how sloppy that car seemed to be handling, I don't think he was going to keep the lead anyway as Bobby Porto now inherits the top spot for the restart. He pulls out to about a five car length gap over Rick Tyler as the lapped car of Eric Jackson uh, starts holding up the rest of the field. Jim Hayes, car 77, uh, contact with the 116 of Ryan Matthews, puts him into the wall and around at the entrance of turn one. After the restart, Lucas Sweeney gets uh, squeezed in between the 7 of Eric Jackson and the 9 of Robert Nelson, sending Jackson sliding way out into the grass. He gets a nice look at those uh, billboards down there, reminding him to not smoke around his kids. You see that Jackson has uh, rejoined the field for the restart as Laura Cyrus gets into the back of the 10L of Dan Lecklider, sending Lecklider around at the entrance to turn 1. I think we're about to see the standard practice of round two having far more cautions than round one tonight, as we're about to get another one at the end of lap number 25 as Lucy Barnton uh, breaks down in that 84 car and comes to a stop in turn one. Harry Essanola in car 45 fell a lap down, but he's got one of the fastest cars on the track as he currently fights Bobby Porto to try to get back on the lead lap. This is not what Porto wants to see as uh, the 16 of Rip Tyler and the, ninth, the 89 of Daniel Diamond are looming in his mirror, but we've got another caution. Eric Jackson uh, continues to be everyone's personal punching bag as he gets turned around by Andre Kinasa, and he saw uh, Rachel Rainsford go off into the grass as well. Bobby Porto has a problem and has to uh, sacrifice the lead to Pitt. Porto's miserable season with the Michelin Suns continue. He had that very good run last week, but that was marred by uh, his involvement in sending his teammate Cyrus Laterza for a scary ride and uh, jeopardizing his uh, Tornado Alley trophy hopes. You saw that Rip Tyler inherited the lead, but here's Eric Jackson as he slides up into the path of Dan Lecklider, takes both cars hard into the wall, and Jackson will no longer be a nuisance to anyone on the track tonight. Tonight is the debut of Ryan Barrett for the Race Sim team. He is uh, the teammate of Caden Beckett in the uh, 383 here. Both of these drivers are just 14 years old, and they are very dedicated players of the uh, popular video game. Ryan Barrett is, again, making his first start in the series, while Caden Beckett made his debut all the way back in Pocono, where he uh, bought Chris Johansson's spot in the field with his mother's credit card. Their pace has not been very impressive tonight, although they are uh, both competing for a spot in the top 20. 
One driver that has been impressing, though, is Robert Nelson, the Australian, in that number nine car. Nelson is running a partial schedule, but he's been fast in almost all of his races, and he uh, told us recently that he does have a ride lined up for 2014. As Derek Dudding uh, holds up the leaders, bringing everybody together, Rip Tyler is still the leader, Daniel Diamond in second place. Diamond, of course, is Zachary Zins' protege over at the New World Orphans. Uh, Harry Asanola is back on the lead lap and has been tearing through the field, now challenging Lucas Sweeney for fourth. Enola is still one of the fastest cars on the track, and he could very well be a threat to win this race as we get towards the end. Enola has three wins this year after uh, previously only holding two victories in a career dating back to 2007. Here are the uh, race sim cars once again, running a couple laps down as Ryan Barrett gets into the back of his teammate, Caden Beckett, and puts him into the wall. This is real life, kids, not Class D legends, as Beckett is very slow in getting back up to speed, causing the whole field to stack up behind him. I'm not sure what's going through his head. After the restart, Nick Asher has a very close call with the 59 of Jessica Graham. Nick Asher getting into an accident is practically an everyday occurrence, so we fully expect it to happen when someone gets anywhere near him and it's quite the miracle when it doesn't, as we see Bobby Porto and Laura Ocean uh, going at it. Ocean is on the lead left, Porto is not, as Porto gets into the back of the 798 again, sending her and Ryan Griffin off the road and into the wall. I'm not sure what either of these drivers did to incur Bobby Porto's wrath, as uh, he was running a lap down to them. As we see Ryan Matthews uh, breaking down and just planting his car into the pit wall after the restart. Lenore Scurry, car number 102, gets tagged by uh, John Hawks. Nick Asher pushed to the inside. Asher comes flying back up the track and sends Lenore Scurry off the road and into the wall. Scurry was running in seventh at the time. Very solid run for her. That's uh, going to suffer a huge setback. Jim Hayes has uh, Bobby Porto behind him on the restart. And uh, Porto uh, simply turns the 77. I'm not sure what's going through Bobby Porto's head right now. He seems to be driving with a very high amount of frustration, as uh, demonstrated by him sliding right off the track and into the wall. That's going to take Porto out of the race. I'm sure that's going to come as a huge relief to the rest of the field. Porto uh, left the track immediately afterwards without uh, talking to anybody. With less than 10 laps to go, Daniel Diamond and Robert Nelson are still in the hunt as uh, you see Harry S. Enola coming up through the field. He's back up to fourth. Enola still has one of the fastest cars on the track, but it's been Rick Tyler in the best position all night. But he's got Daniel Diamond coming after him right now. Diamond driving it in very deep. Tyler trying to maintain the momentum on the high side as they now get by the uh, race sim back markers. Tyler takes the inside around the lap cars and uh, tries to fend off Daniel Diamond. Diamond not really making any progress. In the meantime, the battle for third is on between Enola and Nelson. Coming to the white flag, Enola is not going to win this race, but his charge through the field has been one to watch as he uh, does not face too much of a challenge from Robert Nelson as Rick Tyler comes across the line to take his second win of the year and solidify his points lead. Tyler had a very slow start to his title defense this year, but as the races went on, uh, it became very clear that he's still the man to be. Daniel Diamond comes home with his best career finish. Nelson was very fast all day, but just couldn't hold off Enola at the end. John Hawks and Nick Asher pull through with some badly needed results, and Jesus Ignacio Chavez III comes home in 10th place. He ran very quietly all night long. And now we head over to the New York Auto Ring. For the Atlantic Showdown, Mo Lester, the surprise pole winner for round number one, but that's an absolutely dreadful start that he's off to as Lucas Sweeney takes the lead. Ramsey Cockhunter to second place. Lester holding up the entire inside line on the run down to turn one, allowing the uh, rest of the field to get away. Lester had a uh, brilliant qualifying effort, and the team decided that just wasn't good enough, so they were going to change everything on the car. I have to commend the genius at work over at the 619 team as Mo Lester now being swallowed up by everybody. He's already back to about 15th as he shows no signs of getting up to speed. Close call between Richard Scott and Andre Kinasa. Scott just wasn't paying any attention at all 
as uh, that could have ended badly for both him and Kinasa. Edwin Schwarzlowski hits the apron for some reason going into turn one. Contact now with the pie car of Michael Madrigal. That was another near accident as uh, Margarita Zarada, the 09 car, gets involved as well. I cannot see this ending well if people are not going to be paying any attention in these opening laps. Taylor Brilla now catches up to the uh, eight of Lucas Sweeney and the battle for the lead is on. That is Chris Johans, car 29 in third place right now. Johans, uh, it's been a while since he's been in a race this year. Brillen is off to a much better start tonight than at Oxford Plains as uh, she clears Lucas Sweeney for the lead heading into turn three and that is Kiki Hitsuno, car four, uh, running in fourth place. Alex Carson gets shoved into the wall as Libby Bell and Ramsey Cockner make contact. That's a lot of damage to the right side of that two car and Carson is going to head to pit to get that repaired. Michael Madrigal also hits the pit lane early on. He's got a problem. I believe a tire went down on that pie car, uh, possibly because of that contact with Schwarzlowski in the 707. Harry Asanola and J.W. Lester are uh, both down on power early on in the race. This has been a common problem for uh, the Peter Irving Gray team on these bigger tracks where their cars would just inexplicably lose power. Hopefully, uh, once these cars hit the pit lane, they'll be able to get that problem sorted out. Taylor Brillen, pitting from the lead on lap number six. Forget what I said about Brillen having a good start to this race, as I believe a tire's gone down on the 64. A lot of people are having tire problems in these opening laps. Perhaps there's a little bit of debris on the track uh, from the two incidents that we just saw. Andrea Kinasa currently leads the race as the top ten or so uh, are running single file. Scott Dalitz has a problem in that 18 car. He's dropped to the apron. Nami Miura with a problem as well. So already we're seeing a very high attrition rate. Andre Kinasa brings some of the leaders down into the pit lane towards the end of lap 12. Uh, these cars can safely make it about 13, 14 laps on a tank of gas. After a pit stop cycle out, we see some sort of dispute between the 46 of Nick Azure and the 16 of Rip Tyler. I'm not sure what's going on between them. I certainly didn't see any contact on the track any time between them. Lucas Sweeney and Andre Kinasa lead the race. They've got quite a bit of distance over third place as uh, their pit crews were the fastest during that cycle. Libby Bell is back in third. She's got nobody to draft with right now, so I would expect her to uh, lose the two leaders. Sweeney still leads by about six car lengths over Kinasa as he's got a problem and drops that car to the to the uh, apron on the back stretch. Based on the speed of their pit crews, it looks like uh, Sweeney and Kinasa could potentially be the teams to beat, but Sweeney uh, now having problems. The last time Sweeney won a race was all the way back in 2011 at Talladega. Chris Johans and Libby Bell have now hooked up, or rather they've hooked up the best that they could with uh, Bell clearly struggling to keep up with the uh, 29 car. Andre Kinasa still leads the race, but now she's hooked up with a few of the more competitive back markers, so it's going to be difficult for uh, Johans and Bell to catch up. You see uh, J.W. Lester in the 5.0 car back there. He's gotten his problems sorted out, and he can run lap times comparable to the leaders. However, we believe that Harry Esanola is uh, still struggling to maintain his pace. I believe the 45 may have dropped a cylinder. Laura Cyrus, car 42, was running in fifth place until she blows up, uh, coming to lap number 20. Cyrus has been all over the place as far as her results go. Uh, usually she's pretty fast and dependable as long as the car holds out. Coming into the pit lane, Chris Johans is very fast and uh, very nearly clobbers the 5-0 of, of J.W. Lester. Johans is clearly much too fast entering the pit lane and uh, clips the 5-0, almost takes out the 78 as well. That is going to earn Johans a trip to race control. As we see uh, Taylor Brillen and Allie Riggs, I believe they are running third and fourth at the moment. Brillen and Riggs are both off cycle, so in a few laps they're going to pit and go back a lap down. Interestingly enough, these two drivers are the uh, winners from this very race last year. Andre Kinasa continues to lead the race. She currently holds about a two second lead over Jim Hayes in car 77. Nobody has been able to uh, catch up to Kinasa ever since uh, Sweeney uh, 
had his problem and dropped off the lead lap. Carrionel has got more problems with that 45 car and takes to the apron. Lenore Scurry is dangerously slow in that 102 car for Motor Assault Racing. She's barely breaking 150 miles an hour. Scurry is going to be quite the nuisance uh, when the faster cars catch her. This is Cade Taylor in car 125 running for the uh, Pellerin family-owned team. You may have noticed Luke Pellerin uh, running a few races this year. Uh, Cade Taylor doing a very good job so far running up inside the top 10 as he tries to hold off uh, defending champion Rip Tyler as they come up on the slow car of Chris Johans. Johans's lack of pace is uh, probably due to that incident we ha he had with J.W. Lester in the pit lane. Jessica Graham, car 59, is running a very solid fourth place. Graham has placed herself into the top 20 in points with uh, some of her recent runs as Jim Hayes now challenges Andre Kinasa for the lead using the 102 of Lenore Scurry as a pick to get by. And Hayes now clears uh, Kinasa by a couple dozen car lengths setting into three. Kinasa catches back up, but she abandons her pursuit to uh, pit coming to the end of lap 36. Uh, Jim Hayes is going to uh, follow suit on the next lap, but he blows up on his way to the pits. Hayes' engine explodes at Tom Delgado Racing's home track. This is going to be a, another huge blow for Hayes as he now gets rear-ended at the pin de pit entrance by uh, Luis Garcia Yamines. That just adds insult to injury as Hayes now sits immobilized at the pit entrance. They would have to uh, close the pits for a few laps. With all of her rivals falling by the wayside, Andrea Kinasa continues to uh, enjoy a rather big lead. Uh, but Libby Bell currently runs in second place. That is Lenore Scurry, the 102. She's gotten her problem solved. However, uh, Chris Johans has not. Johans still running dangerously slow as Kiki Itsuno and Nick Azure come up to lap him, splitting him down the middle. Rip Tyler is currently running in seventh place, still on the lead lap, although he's about 40 seconds behind the leader. He has uh, hooked up with this pack of back markers here, including Lucas Sweeney, who's running a couple laps down after a potential race-winning run went away. And Tyler's blown up with just 15 laps to go. He got the win at Oxford Plains after failing to finish at Russia, and now this is going to set him back once again. And we're going to have to see what his uh, rivals can make of this. Very disappointing finish for the points leader as Andre Kinasa comes into the pits with just 12 laps to go. Uh, she should be able to safely make it to the end. And as expected, Kinasa maintains the lead after pit stop cycle out, but Libby Bell is just a couple of seconds behind her. And now that she's hooked up with Lucas Sweeney, the 24 is coming fast, but you can bet that Bell is worried about her own engine after her uh, teammate blew up. Kiki Itsuno in car number four is running in third place, although she's about 25 seconds behind the leaders. Just like the first round of Daytona, it's been very interesting to see this race play out with all the uh, pit strategy with uh, no cautions to interfere. Nick Asher in car number 46 is on his way to a top five finish. He got his first top five of the season back at Salem. Kate Taylor, car 125, is still hanging in there. He is in fifth. Taylor and the Pellerin team are looking to make a splash towards the end of the season and possibly try to get some sponsorship dollars for 2014. Andre Kinasa and uh, Libby Bell are now going at it for the lead. Kinasa trying to hold off the 24 for her second win of the year. With Jim Hayes faltering in these last few months, Kinasa is caught right up to him for the uh, Rookie of the Year chase. And another win would really solidify herself as a contender. Jack Dempsey, car 41, running in sixth place, has a problem with just a couple of laps to go. Very disappointing for the 41 team, but he just might salvage a solid result out of this because of how spread out the fields become as Andre Kinasa does not face any major challenge from Libby Bell. And coming to the line, Kinasa will grab her second win of the year. This has very much been Groves Racing's breakout year, and Andre Kinasa has done a tremendous job helping them along. Nick Asher comes home in third place. That's his best career finish, and he was the uh, last car on the lead lap. Kiki Itsuno had a problem and fell by the wayside. John Hulk brings home another top 10 finish for that struggling 114 team. Taylor Brillen brings home another ninth place finish, taking advantage of Rip Tyler blowing up, and Richard Scott rounds out the top 10. Moving on to round number two, that is Anthony Griffith on the pole. 
Griffith, the very outspoken Master Cup driver, making his return to the Arla Elite Series presented by Smash Beer. And that is Kyle Gaffigan, his Team Thunder teammate, on the outside, completing the front row for Team Thunder. But that's a very slow start that Griffith has gotten off to. Gaffigan jumps out to the lead. Kevin Monroe, car 63 on the outside of uh, Griffith, trying to move into second. As the field uh, pours into turn one, Griffith maintains third. So, looks like he just got a poor start, unlike Molester, who just had a poor car. As Ryan Griffin, car 86, almost gets turned by uh, Casey Campbell in the 422. Heading back through the field, it looks like we have a battle for 25th going between the Team Burr cars of Derek Dudding and Cletus McGuffey and Brian Barrett in the race sim car. We've got a four wide situation coming to the end of the first lap and Bixby Foot car 14 is caught right in the middle of it. Contact with Dan Blacklighter, the 10L, Ashley Tucker and Bobby Porto caught up as well. AJ Young, car 15, piles in, Herbie Finkelberg barely misses it. Big Speedfoot would keep going. Everyone else is done for the night. Very disappointing and early exit for a lot of these drivers, especially uh, Bobby Porto, who just can't seem to catch a break. Kurt Walker's engine expires under caution. We've uh, come to expect this from Kurt Walker Motorsports. Walker, of course, recently excluded along with Carlo De Preto from the uh, Rockford 200 due to their antics at 7077 as we see uh, Derek Dudding pile into the back of Herbie Finkelberg as the field comes into the pits. That's going to earn Dudding a trip to race control and a very likely penalty, not that it's going to uh, affect him that much. Anthony Griffith leads on the restart. The top four right now, Griffith, Daiho, uh, Lucy Barnton, and Alex Quitt did not pit under that caution. Ryan Griffin in the 86 is going to come charging forward and take the lead as the field comes to lap. Derek Dudding, Griffith crashes into the back of Dudding. That was almost our second caution right there. This night has been full of little frustrations for Anthony Griffith, and we're not even at lap 15, as Griffith is now being held up by the 68 and loses sight of the leaders. Griffith has enough and brings this car to the pits at the end of lap 14. The cars that did pit under caution, we expect to be coming in within the next three laps. Alex Quit, car 48. Another one of those guys that didn't pit under caution comes in at the end of lap 16. Griffith and the rest of the field will follow suit. Joseph Howard, after a fast stop by the 17 team, takes the lead, but we are now under our second caution as Ryan Griffin has a problem. He hits the apron, slides back up onto the track into the path of Kyle Gaffigan. That was a hard hit for Griffin and Gaffigan. They would both climb out of their cars, although they are now done for the night. The field pitted once again under caution, and Trey Ashby comes out with the lead. Ashby came home with a third place finish for Brinson Engineering at the 7077 Speedway, despite flipping his car on the cooldown lap. And now here comes Ryan Matthews with a three wide move on Ashby and Robert Leglider to take the lead. Uh, Matthews, we have not seen him up front very much this year, but it's clear that he's got a fast car under him tonight, so we're about to see what he can do with that. As we see Casey Campbell, car 422, coming on the inside. Campbell making the move for second on Robert Lecklider as we see four wide behind the leaders. Herbie Finkelberg is still very fast, despite uh, being the victim of Derek Dudding not paying any attention at all. The Speed Vision crew is trying to redeem themselves after blowing up from the lead last week. 2013 as a whole has been a struggle for Speed Vision. Finkelberg got that win at, I believe, Carbondale last year. But this year, he's usually fallen by the wayside before uh, the end of the race. Cletus McGuffey in car 54, now holding up some of the leaders as well as Finkelberg. McGuffey is running lap times uh, comparable to Chris Johans in race one. So, yes, McGuffey is keeping up with a two-time series champion. As Ryan Matthews almost ends his night, uh, nearly crashing into the uh, back of Ryan Matt. Uh, Ryan Barrett, sorry, there are too many damn Ryans in this series. Radomir Stanichev in car number 82 follows suit. Matthews uh, holds him off for now. Ryan Matthews uh, now coming across Derek Dunning. Herbie Finkelberg uses the opportunity to sneak through and take the lead. Stanichev pulls to the inside, making the move for second. And that is Robert Lecklider, the 110, uh, in fourth. Radomir Stanichev. Uh, brings Finkelberg and Lecklider into the pit lane. Ryan Matthews and Eric Jackson stay out for an additional lap. There is Matthews now heading into the pits, coming to the end of lap 36. 
However, Matthews would be down on power once he came out of the pit lane. Matthews led about seven laps, and now he is about 15 miles an hour off the pace as Stanny Chevin Jackson go right on by. A very disappointing turn of events for Ryan Matthews, who had a car fast enough to win this race, as Joseph Howard uh, leads once again. The 17 crew has been very fast tonight. Tom Delgado Racing just might have something to smile about after Jim Hayes blew up from the lead. However, Eric Jackson is going to catch right up to the 17, and he's going to make a run at Howard for the lead. Eric Jackson uh, splitting that 7 car with Zach Gott for the championship. I'm pretty sure that Gott has uh, had many more races in that 7 car than Jackson, so Jackson is trying to show what he can do with his uh, limited opportunities. Herbie Finkelberg blows up in car 66. He was running an 8th at the time. Finkelberg goes up in smoke for the second week in a row. Casey Campbell makes a charge and challenges Eric Jackson for the lead. That is Leslie Riggs, car 50, back there running in fourth. We've been seeing a bit more of a competitive race than in round one, but then again, we've had a couple of cautions to keep everything closer together, but we've still had several pit stops to widen the margin. Casey Campbell heads into the pit lane. Oh, look out! She crashes into the back of Dan Lecklider. Uh, coming into the pits, Campbell wasn't paying any attention to her speed at all, and that could have been very easily avoided. Eric Jackson stays out for an additional lap, and uh, pits coming to 10 laps to go. And during this final run to the checkered flag, Jackson holds a very comfortable lead by several seconds over the rest of the field. Jackson has been competing for about the past three years. He has never won a race here in the early Elite Series, presented by Smash Beer. Joseph Howard holds second place over Casey Campbell, Bigsby Foot, and Dan Lecklater are a lap down. Radomir Stanichev in the 82 is in this fight as well. Stanichev and Campbell hooking up to try to catch up to the 17 car, but Eric Jackson, during this final run, faces absolutely no competition. He comes off the final corner, and down to the line to take his first career, Arla Elite Series victory. This finally puts Gravity Racing's 7 car in victory lane. Radomir Stanichev for Rus Autosport grabs the uh, high climber bonus, getting by Joseph Howard and Casey Campbell to take second. Rachel Rainsford finishes seventh, putting both Gravity Racing cars in the top 10. Both of the Lecklider brothers are also in the top 10. Ryan Matthews does a good job of salvaging eighth place after losing power and Seiji Daiho rounds out the top 10. And now here are the point standings with just two race weekends remaining before the Rockford 200. Rick Tyler holds a 30 point lead over Taylor Brillen. Casey Campbell is back to third. Libby Bell up to fourth with her uh, newfound momentum. Harry Essanola fifth. The duo of Seiji Daiho and Nami Mura are sixth. Joseph Howard seventh. Rachel Rainsford eighth. Andrea Kinas has made her way up into the top 10. And Ashley Tucker uh, is 10th. The top 10 are separated by only 94 points, so there could be a lot more shuffling that could potentially happen over these next couple of weeks. Now looking at 11th through 20th, Bixby Foot is 12 P's uh, pretty far back by uh, Power Steering Incorporated standards. Jim Hayes continues his free fall through the points. We all thought he would be a championship contender, but uh, these last few months have uh, debunked those theories. Jim Hayes has certainly been very fast, but the luck just hasn't been there. Lucas Sweeney is 14th, uh, the 707 team and Herbie Finkelberg are tied for 15th, and Zachary Zins in the 99 is up to 20th for the New World Orphans team.